Well, welcome back to the channel, everybody. Just uh, came up to Cleveland for the Memorial Day weekend and thought I was going to be here for a couple days, but just got a called into work tomorrow. So I'm going to have to bust out a little bit early. I, Randy and I were working on the layout and was hoping to, you know, get a solid update on, uh, you know, some more progress and uh, also brought a couple locomotives up that I wanted to make a comparison video. Um, so I guess the comparison video is going to have to wait, but it should be fun when I can get around to doing it. Little, uh, little sneak peek of what that'll be. Um, got this ProtoSound 2 5 volt dash 9 um, that has very few miles on it. I bought it in brand new, never run condition. Um, it's the second time I've had it on the layout, and it just it pulls like a monster for a not enormous um, locomotive. And I have the sound turned way down. It's pulling 22, and these aren't light cars. It's pulling a 22 car train right now. And it's the direction it's going, it's it's going up a two and a half percent grade and uh, it does it without breaking a sweat. In my last uh, trip to, video, our trip to Uncle Ray's trains, I mentioned that I bought an AC 4400 and I did notice the, as is common with all these MTHs that have a little age on them, the, um, walkway needs to be glued back down but that's a uh, protosound 2 3 volt era ac4400 and uh was running those together in consist and it gave me the thought hey why don't i do a comparison so everybody can see some of the difference between you know early ps2 stuff versus later ps2 you know the later ps2 stuff has a lot of similarities visually to the ps3 but in any case just wanted to give a quick quick layout update since I'm not going to be able to do a whole lot more than that. Uh, good amount of stuff going on. If you saw our backdrop videos, um, I kind of mentioned in there that I was going to change the track plan around. Um, and that is actually, uh, we kind of settled on a layout. So basically we rearranged the main line so that main line no longer is going to get followed by um, trains coming in to this little industrial spur. So what we have here is basically um, our primary purpose for this spur is to get a concrete facility up here. So we're gonna have a, a concrete facility up here and it'll tie in with our backdrop. There's some silos back there in the corner. And this will come down to this upper spur that if you've seen the video, this has been here from, from day one, but it'll allow us to either park concrete or sand or even you know coal uh, trains up here run them through the facility uh, leave them up there staged do some switching etc now we also have an additional we got the CSX AC 6000 sitting right there but we have another stub end track down there so we can probably get another industry up here or maybe just you know have these um, do something that makes one of these buildings on the actual backdrop look like an industry. And then there is an actual switchback, which makes for some fun switching. A switchback track right over here that comes to a dead end. And we're gonna have uh, an agricultural industry up here. The uh, road on our backdrop will, will, will come into the foreground uh, and kind of serve this area here. And uh, as you guys can see, I just got uh, old 9829 creeping through the layout right now at about six or seven scale miles per hour. It's sound turned way down, but it does not struggle on its own whatsoever. Kind of like the older PS2 five volt stuff. It's very simple, it's easy to work on. Um, I know a lot of it gets mal maligned by a lot of folks, but started working, uh, I think in one of the last videos, I sort of sort of gave a little sneak, um, did not get to work on this, this at all while I've been up, but it's just got a base layer of dirt and ground cover and some foliage and whatnot starting to get applied to it. It's gonna be really bushy and brushy and overgrown eventually. Now, 
that's a removable section. It completely comes out. I also started working down here um, on this section. This literally I made today, set it out in the sun to dry. So it's gonna get painted and covered up. It's also a removable section so that we can get back in there if there's any derailments. Um, started making some wall uh, over here. Now what we're gonna end up doing, you're not gonna be able to see it, but I've drawn a line. We're gonna, we're gonna cut some of this back so we don't have as much overhang right here. Um, this is gonna all be bridge going back around that curve with some supports. But um, got this Lionel sort of coal mine structure, um, coal tipple facility, sometime maybe, maybe over a year ago. And I painted it, weathered it, and it's not quite to where I want it to be, but it's getting there. So when I made the change over here and decided to connect these so that I had a runaround track, um, I just kind of started thinking, hey, you know, could that possibly fit in there? And sure enough, it does. I raised it up off, off the table level so that large freight cars can be switched back through there. There's a uh, tunnel, por tunnel portal just sitting here right now. I have to raise this up higher so that larger cars can fit through. And uh, that'll be permanently mounted uh, when I get around to it. Got some more dirt. Um, down in this area this is going to be a construction uh i don't know if it's going to be a construction like facility or if it's going to be a heavy equipment sales but it'll be something construction related um did start getting some ballast down in this area through here and as it gets closer to the cold tipple you'll start to see some black getting pulled in and then as it goes through it'll pretty much be cinders and there's going to be a large presence of cinders back uh through here We'll get that tunnel area kind of lined and, and hidden up. The last time I was up, and I, I wasn't able to make a video, <clears throat> I started bringing the level of the ground up over here. Um, so where you see this foam on this side, and on a portion of this piece right here, this is gonna be, uh, eventually it'll be at rail level. So, these tracks um, are going to essentially be buried. I'm not sure if I'm going to make it, you know, grade level rail in concrete or grade level rail in asphalt. I started uh, probably two months ago. I started bringing some asphalt around in, into this area over here. And my thought is to bring it through and actually bring it across this rail and have some sort of tie-in right here with this road coming through. So there's actually some semblance of, of, of road traffic through through this area. But um, got a fair amount of dirt down, uh, put down some more dirt and ballast over in this area. I will ultimately have to crawl up in there to work under this area. Won't, won't be fun, but uh, you know, we'll, we'll get it done, we will get it done. So Randy has actually been working on uh, his side of the layout and well, I guess I'll come around here because the train's gonna block most of what he's been doing, but he's been doing some ground cover, um, some really kind of thick ground cover. Super, I don't know if I've ever shown this, but he's got this super cool scene where he's got this, what is this, a 34, 34 Ford? Yeah. It's rusted out 34 Ford that somebody abandoned and started to get overgrown the trees are coming up through it and he's starting to get all his weeds and stuff planted uh he had started some static grass on this little on this little uh, swale and didn't really like it so he came back through and kind of did some traditional ground cover on there um, i think he did a few more bushes and shrubs over kind of in this wooded area um my my niece um moved out got her old own place so it freed up some space in the basement so we've actually started we moved uh, the workbench out of here um and we'll eventually get our some of our rolling stock we some of the rolling stocks already moved over into the new storage area but this space here will ultimately be um, used to bring the trains back from here uh from this spur coming off this, uh, basically I call this the interlocking, 
um, and it'll come down and go to a lower level. So eventually uh, there's still a bunch of stuff under the layout that has to be moved. It's a little messy down there right now, but anything that's not train related will eventually get moved and we'll be able to start expanding uh, our main line basically double up the main line. We got one scale mile on the main line now and that'll take us to two scale miles below and then the connector will probably give us a third to half of an additional scale mile. But uh, as the train has moved out, we'll, uh, Randy's been working on getting this little kind of track side work done. And he's just been planting a myriad of different kinds of bushes and shrubs and weeds. I'm kind of bringing it down all the way down here to where we have the one area that actually flattens out. This is literally, this, this area right here is the only place on this main line that is actually level. Um, it's a constant grade everywhere else, either up or down. But he's just working through the different types of weeds and plants and shrubs that we have, and he's just kind of going through and adding them in. And he says that Finishing this stuff off back here is not going to be an issue. So he's going to be really uh, precise and not break any of these trees that he's got planted and eventually get the, get behind it uh, landscape. But it's really, it's really starting to look like something. He'll get, you're just kind of coming together in the middle, aren't you, Ryan? Yeah. Yeah, this area right here, he's just got some ground cover. He's got some, some foliage and some vines and thickets kind of started over here, but you can kind of see layout looks a little you know it's got that under construction look right now but that's what uh, that's what makes it so fun I think it's uh, really cool the um, we're not really using it right now but having the upper level it's on you know we have a Z4000 right now and we don't have we're gonna be building an electrical cabinet over here kind of probably gonna get that lower level created before we put something permanent in here the lower level will follow, you know, kind of the same idea of what's on the upper level in terms of the layout, but until we have it in, it's kind of hard to have anything permanent. Um, oh, yeah, got a new mascot too, everybody. That's that's Luna. That's the uh, the railroad dog. She's, uh, what's she, about four months old now? She's an American bully, about four months old. She already's pushing 40 pounds. Sweet as pie. What a great dog. But yeah, we got the Z4000 and we got this main level that we have built now, it's split into two zones, two districts, if you will. And when we add the lower level, we'll, we'll bring another Z4000 uh, into the equation. So we'll have, we'll have four districts total. But um, just wanted to give a, quick, uh, give a quick update so everybody could see what's going on. I wish there was more that I could share with you and I wish I had another day up here as I had planned um, to get a little bit more done. But uh, in any case, hey, I appreciate everybody stopping by, spending a few minutes of your time with us here at the Lake Erie and Midwestern. I hope everybody's having a safe and wonderful Memorial Day. Uh, my brother and I are both veterans, so to all of our veterans that are you know, past, present, the ones that are no longer with us, and obviously the folks on active duty and are active in our, in our national, uh, national Guard and Reserves, Appreciate your service. You know, thanks for what you do. Thanks for protecting our country. But hey, everybody enjoy the cookouts. Enjoy the rest of your Memorial Day weekend. Thanks a bunch for visiting here, uh, the Lake Erie Midwestern. Take care.